hi friends now in this video we are going to talk about the parts of the flower and here you can see a label diagram a diagrammatic representation of LS of a flower and this diagram is taken from CBS NCRT class 12 textbook and you can see the diagram of a flower bisexual flower and basically a bisexual flower is divided into two parts essential parts and non-essential parts now we can see what are the parts which is essential in a bisexual flower essential part of a flower contains andrusium and gynesium andrusium is the term used for the male reproductive part of a bisexual flower and gynesium is female reproductive part now the units of gynesium are the units of gynesium are carpel or pistil and they contain three parts namely stigma style and ovary now in andrusium the units are stamen and it has it is divided into anther and filament now if we see gynoecium part there is that is carpal we can see we can see stigma which helps which is a sticky substance which can hold pollen grains and uh, where the pollen grains come and sticks and its style part and below that it there is some ovary in ovary in ovary ovule is present and now we, we can see what are the non-essential part of the typical bisexual flower the non-essential part of the flower contains the calyx and corolla calyx is the term used for the collective sepals and corolla is used for the collective petals and uh, as we know that petals are very colorful and it should be colorful to attract insects for pollination and uh, sepals are uh, just to hold the flower upright and sepals are not colored often and near ovary we can see a nectiferous area which contain nectar and now we can see the diagram stigma this part is stigma and this part and this part is style and down it is ovary inside ovary ovule is present and we can see anther over here and its filament a tube a tubular structure and a petal a colorful petal and a green sepal and we know that in a bisexual flower only cross pollination takes place is it right no it's wrong in a bisexual flower only self pollination can be taken place and now let's see the parts of the ovary and ovary contains ovule and inside ovule there are two major ends named chalazal end and micropylar end in micropylar end we can see egg and two synergids these constitute to form filiform apparatus 
and also called as egg apparatus and there are two polar nuclei present or the center and it's also known as center cell and in the cell as well and antipodals are present to find out which is micropylar and we can use a method and we can we should first see the position or the or the end where the egg is present if the egg is present in a end then that is that end is known as micropylar end so we can find out and differentiate between micropylar and cellular end now this constitutes this antipodals are present in cellular ends now we can see the cellular ends has three three antipodals and in in micropylar end we can see one egg and two synergids and at the center we can see other two central cells and it is said to be 3 plus 3 plus 2 or 3 plus 2 plus 3 which constitutes the number of cells and it is also said that seven cell and eight nucleated stage in this form and now we can see the different different parts seven cell and eight nucleate is present over this type of over this type of ovule now let's look upon pollination there are different methods of pollination now for and we know that the pollination only occurs in uh, unisexual flower and there are many types of pollination like insect pollination which is also known as entomophily phily is the term used for pollination and uh, insect is termed as entomo so collectively it is known as entomophily similarly everything can be said now pollination by animal is zoophily pollination by wind is animophily pollination by water is hydrophily pollination by bat is cryopterophily cryopterophily pollination by snails is known as malacophily because snail is a mollusca and mollusca is also known as malaco and pollination is referred to phili so collectively it is known as malacophily now we have seen the different types of pollination and now we can see what is autogamy these are kinds of pollination depending on the source of pollen pollination can be divided into three types autogamy autogamy and geitonogamy and xenogamy now first we'll see autogamy in this type of pollination is achieved within the same flower transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower in a normal flower which opens and exposes the anthers and the stigma complete autogamy is rather rare autogamy in such flowers or the flowers requires synchrony in pollen release and stigma receptivity and also the anthers and the stigma should lie close to each other so that self pollination can occur some plants such as viola common pansy oxalis and comelina produce two types of flowers namely chasmogamous flowers which are similar to flowers of the species with 
exposed anthers which are open and stigma this is also open and pleistogamous flowers which do not open at all which will remain closed and uh, in such flowers the anthers and stigma lie close to each other uh, where an anthers the high this the highs in the flower buds pollen grains common in come in contact with the stigma to effect pollination now let's see the second type of pollination is gatenogamy transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of anther flowers and the flowers of the same plant although gatenogamy is functionally cross pollination involving a pollinating agent genetically it is similar to the autogamy since the pollen grains come from the same plant yeah now let's go to the third type xenogamy transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of a different plant this is only type of pollination which during pollination brings gener- genetically different types of pollen grains to the stigma and we know that a pollination means the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma is termed as pollination pollination now we have seen about the three topics namely the parts of the bisexual flower and second the the internal structure of ovule and the cell stage inside the ovule and third one about pollination and types of pollination and hope you like my explanation and our discussion makes you as well as me knowledgeable and think more and which help which also helps to improve your career now thank you for watching this video and in most of the videos they say not most in all the video they say to subscribe and like and comment but i wish to and wish to say just comment and you can say your opinions about this video and also you can say your comment so that i could improve my video from next so thank you and i am making this video because of the inspiration which my biology sir gave to me and so that we both are beneficial you and me thank you